Well, um, you know, it's sad to say that 64% is such a low number for graduation rate. I feel it's actually the curriculum and the kids are not comprehending. Um, they're getting more and more laxed on what's out there. I mean, a fourth grader, when I was in school, we had to memorize our multiplications and divisions. They're doing everything on the calculator now. They don't have to have things memorized. It's not repetitive learning that's gone out the window. It's more how they um, want to let them experience it. it, you know, and I don't, I don't think that the way that the curriculum is, is, is being very helpful with it. I would like to see smaller class sizes so kids get more one-on-one -on -one attention because the bigger the class is, the harder it is for one teacher to be with 35 students compared to maybe 20 or 15. You're going to learn a lot more with smaller class sizes. Well, Nikki, I think you hit the nail on the head. I really agree with you on, on many of your points. Um, unfortunately, uh, the education system goes through what I call trends. And the trend has, has become standardized testing and measurement and, um, and, and the Oaks testing, which you know is how fast you can read, not how fast you can comprehend, which is why I'm so happy to hear you say that. Um, and so we're taking away uh, the, the discussion levels. I know when I was an elementary principal in Connecticut, first graders knew what a protagonist was, an antagonist was, could tell you what a plot was, and all of that kind of thing as a six and a seven year old. And, and it wasn't unusual. They used words in their vocabulary like docent. I, saw, I talked to the docent at the museum yesterday. So there was a rich vocabulary. There was a lot of talk, a lot of small groups, a lot of, you know, what ifs, uh, discussions around real books, uh, not just reading, you know, passages as fast as you can possibly read it. And so, you know, I think that, uh, you know, I've survived several of these, these trend waves, um, and uh, Sim and Cam is one that I was absolutely opposed to, and what a waste of money we spent on that. I lost some of the best teachers. I was at the high school level, and I lost some of the best teachers that I had ever seen teach because they refused to, to do the busy work of Sim and Cam. Uh, they wanted to teach. They wanted to have relationships with their students and not be burdened with collecting as the ed term is, artifacts of their teaching. So, Well, what I do differently, for instance, in the elementary level is that I would um, I'd still do some testing. And they all, by the way, the Oaks test is dead at the end of this year. And so there's a new test, Smarter Balance, that's coming out. And I'm not sure that it's going to be any smarter, but we'll see. <laughs> but what would be different is, is that teachers would have a lot more autonomy and use their gifts. People go into teaching not to become robots and to have to do things over and over, the same thing over and over and over. And, and you know, you test the kids, you know, it's, tell them, till they're just robots themselves. So there's not an engagement level. When I go into classrooms, and I've been at all 19 schools, some on several occasions, and I go into classrooms, and I see what passes as instruction nowadays, it's, it's just frightening to me. I mean, how about handing out a book? We all read it, we all talk about it, we all think about it, we talk about what's going to happen next. That's called thinking and not just regurgitating. Uh, it's nice if you can take tests fast and great. And I think that the measurements are uh, over the top. Um, well, the change, I was at a uh, budget committee meeting. The first two were, weren't attended at all. Uh, one person attended uh, two meetings total. And uh, then the third meeting was a, the Hispanic community came in. It was a packed house. I mean, it was a blend label at Roosevelt. One gentleman stood up and he talked about uh, and I was having a hard time because the interpreter was talking and he was, but one of the things he mentioned very adamantly was that school district, you need to do more to get parent groups together, us together. And if you do, we can help in education. Well, it's kind of like one of those aha things. That, you know, we've heard it several times before, and yet it just never happens. So one of the things I think it's just critical, and it's just a catalyst to help us out, is to get... Um, get the, ki the, the parents involved. Hire a coordinator, if you will. Get parents involved in education. A a get these organized groups together. And then, and then as that evolves, you know, have that, they're, they're a catalyst right into getting intervention programs. Intervention programs in, in K through, through six, 
but, more, but importantly, to improve the graduation rate, you have to, we have to get more interventions in the high schools. I mean, these kids are dropping out like flies. And, you know, my, um, my son, as, as all kids, was struggling for a while, and oftentimes they'll go down this path and, they, and they're failing at certain things, and you never know about it. PAL's not updated, these things. And so people that can watch that stuff, get interventions, catch these kids, is just critical. So get the, parent, the, the parents organized, which will lead to community organization and business organization. And we have, a, we have a vast trove of retirement folks in the community that can help out in schools, reading, would love to read. We just don't have a good coordination system to get that done. I think that's critical. Uh, and then uh, the targeted interventions. Uh, and then uh, I think we need to lobby the state for more, for more secure funds. I mean, as a board, as, as a community, continue to lobby. Uh, the testing itself, is, is a lot of it's out of our control, so we need to deal with it as, as it comes. But we do have control of getting the community organized. We do have control of getting more, the businesses in the, in, the, in the schools. We just need to have an active board, a, a positive board, to go out and, and, and get that kind of stuff done. Can I say something in regards to Larry also? I really like what he's saying to get the community involved. Um, this proficiency grading is just awful because it totally takes the parents completely out of the loop. You don't know how hard it is to argue with an 11, 12, 13, 14, up to 18 year old kid to do their homework when it doesn't count. How are kids supposed to learn? Kids learn by repetition, doing stuff over and over and over again. And I think getting parents involved is, is a great, great opportunity. I'd, I'd like to piggyback also. Um, you know, we had um, one of the things that when I, I am on the board, I guess, maybe I'm going to be off the board, who knows, but <laughs> is um, we started a Latino advisory committee. Um, and it was the superintendent, the secondary ed, uh, director, the elementary ed director, and then brave Hispanic parents who came along. And the first year, um, they were asked to go around and look at, at where to put signage up for Spanish signs, and they're up everywhere in the district now. Um, the second year, they disbanded themselves after the second year because they didn't feel that um, their concerns were um, being taken seriously. And so there's, there is no uh, student achievement, you can call it anything you want, a student achievement committee or whatever. And, and they were trying to bring up issues like, yes, we have a pretty high graduation rate for our Hispanic students at South. But if you dig into the data, which I did, I've been busting data for 32 years, is 30% of those kids passed the Oaks test in reading. The rest of them did not, and they still graduated. I mean, those are the kind of issues that a board member digs deep into, I hope, and does their homework and understands that, you know, data is data as you have to keep working it through until you really find out the real meaningful data and what you then can change around.